Passing HTML can be quite tricky, especially if you're trying to do it quick and efficient with minimal effort. In this video, I'm going to go through a few tips that I think will help you and stop you falling into the common pitfalls when passing HTML. So the first one I'm going to say is that I much prefer to use CSS selectors over anything else. Now I know that uh, XPath is extremely powerful and very customizable uh, and you can get a lot out of it and if you already know that then that's great but if you don't and you're using the standard beautiful suit for uh, fine kind of selectors I definitely recommend that you spend a little bit of time and effort now learning about CSS selectors. They're pretty straightforward and simple. They're very clear and concise and you can kind of really see what you're trying to get to. Um, it's one string which is actually really important when it comes to uh, abstracting out into functions like I've talked about before. It makes it much easier. You can chain them together easier uh, and I find it easier to get the things like attributes from the elements as well. So I would highly recommend that if you're still using beautiful soup selectors you carry on using BS4 but you use select and select one instead with some CSS selectors. I think you will find it much easier and quicker to use once you understand it all. The second thing is to search the actual source document rather than the inspect element part of your browser. And that's because the inspect element is actually the representation of the DOM, which is the document object model. And that could have been messed with with the JavaScript that's been ex uh, executed on that page. So what I suggest is that when you're first looking at a site, whether you're trying to get information from, is you copy some string, some piece of information from the actual page that's kind of relevant in a way, uh, something important to it, and then you go right click view source and you search in the source document for that piece of information. This is going to give you a much better, much clearer idea of where that data actually relies in, uh, actually lies in that document and the easiest way for you to get it out. When you do that search, it will show you how many results there are and you can flip through and you can catch things like seeing that information in any script tags or JSON that might be floating around on the page that you wouldn't necessarily see if you just dive straight in with inspect element. Now, I always do this first, but then when I get going and I know what I'm doing, I do use the inspect element tool just to really hone in my selectors because it makes it much easier highlighting and all that stuff. The next thing is to make sure you look back up the tree when you're trying to get a specific piece of information. So instead of just focusing on, on that really uh, specific element, that tag or whatever it is that you're trying to get, I like to go back up the tree a little bit more as I find you can actually construct much smaller CSS selector expressions uh, by doing it that way. So let's say the main thing that we're looking for has a really long cumbersome class name or ID tag or it seems to be randomly generated somehow. If there's no obvious easy way to get it with minimal characters involved, sometimes you can just go back up a few elements, back up the tree a little bit and you'll find something that's got quite a good name or tag like main or something like that that you can really get to and then you can just use your CSS selector to say find this element and then go down the tree to find this one next. I do this all the time when I'm selecting data from websites and I would definitely recommend that you kind of have a look at the slightly bigger picture of the element tree of the HTML document when you're trying to pick which selectors you're going to use to get which bits of data. So when we're using our selectors, we have the option usually of select or select one, find, find all, get or get all, depending on which package you're using. And you need to learn how to make good use of both. So the select in Beautiful Soup 4's case where you use select, it will um, select every element that matches that selector that CSS that you've given it, that CSS selector. So this is going to be good and bad in a way. It's going to match all of them, but you're going to get a list back. So you're going to have to do something with that before you can actually make an action on that element, like get the text or whatever. But it's good in another way. What you can do is if you actually wanted a list of all the elements that you could then do something with, that's one option. Or let's say the page that you're looking at doesn't have an awful lot of descriptors like classes or IDs or something that you can use. Maybe it's just bare table tags and this page has got like four or five different tables on. You only want one of them, you can use select, find me all the tables and you can index out whichever it is that you want to get to. And conversely, you can just use select one. You hey, this is, I want the first one that you're gonna give me for this. This is the element that I want. So you just need to understand what both 
will do for you. One will return a list you can then iterate over and one will always return the first element that it finds. And my last point is one that I think people kind of often overlook a little bit, which I find quite interesting, is that make good use of those attribute tags within the element themselves. So don't always feel like, hey, I need to get the text from this element. Always have a look at what you're trying to get, the information that you want, and see where it actually lies. Because quite often, you might find one element has different attributes, like the href. Sometimes it'll have a SKU, sometimes it'll have a title, sometimes it'll have something else that is relevant data to what you want. And you can then just use the one selector and get the different attributes from that selector to populate the data that you're after. So make sure you always just check through, see where your data is, see where it's going to come from and make good decisions on which selectors you're going to use and trying to keep them as short as possible. So with much less effort for writing and any rewriting that you may need to do. That's it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed these. If you have, I think you're going to like this video here next.